the evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of MP Weekly, the weekly webcast show that brings you up to date with, with all the latest news in the world of North Park University Athletics. I am your host, Kevin Shepke, and for the next 25 to 30 minutes or so, we'll be covering uh, all the uh, athletics that have been going on over this past week as the uh, fall athletic teams now start to dwindle down and the winter sports teams are, are starting to uh, take, take over for their season openers. Uh, starting this uh, coming weekend with the women's basketball team who will be at home against Olivet College on November 15th. But before we go into um, any uh, any of the news of the week, uh, this uh, late, earlier this afternoon we learned that the North Park men's soccer team, which finished the regular season with a 13-5-1 record, earned uh, an NCAA a Division III national tournament at large bid. And for the Vikings, this was now their fourth trip to the NCAA tournament in the last five seasons and it will be their sixth trip to the tournament um, since the 2005 season. Um, North Park will be facing Thomas Moore College, uh, which was the winner of the President's Athletic Conference uh, Tournament uh, Championship last week. Um, they earned the, uh, P the PAC's automatic bid to the NCAA tournament, and the Vikings will be facing Thomas Moore on November 15th out at Kenyon College in Gambier, Ohio. How did how how the North Park uh, Vikings got to this uh, spot? They uh, were able to finish second in the CCIW regular season standings, and they hosted uh, Elmhurst College uh, last Wednesday in the CCIW semifinals. Unfortunately, um, they uh, all they did tie against Elmhurst 1-1 in that game. Uh, Johan Gustafsson scored the um, the game tire for El uh, for North Park in that game after Elmhurst had taken a one nothing lead just before halftime. Uh, Vikings unfortunately uh, did not move on to the CCIW championship because they ended up losing a 7-6 penalty kick decision um, to Elmhurst in that matchup. We actually do have a highlight from that match so let's go ahead and show you that, uh, that highlight the, the Vikings against uh, Elmhurst College uh, last Wednesday. And now the starting lineup for your North Park University Vikings. Minding the Nets, number one, Wesley Woodley. Number five, Pishemek Zapilski. Number seven, Carl Damberry. Number ten, Diego Lashley. Number eleven, Christopher Ostberry. Number twelve, Johan Gustafsson. Number thirty-two, Frederick Greif. Number 35, Stanny Lokamba. Number 40, Keba Senye. Number 43, Carlos Rodriguez. And number 44, Nathaniel Paisley. The Vikings are coached by John Bourne. And with that, we wish you a good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to CCIW Postseason Soccer as the Vikings are hosting Elmhurst College. Vikings coming into tonight's matchup with a 13-5 and record, while the Elmhurst Blue Jays come into tonight's matchup with a 11-4-3 and record. It's funny we mentioned these two teams because well, exactly one week ago, Elmhurst was visiting the Vikings here, and uh, the Vikings earned a one nothing victory over Elmhurst to put themselves in position to earn the number two seed in this position. Greif, shot taken, and put it in! Golso, Golso, Golso! Goal for North Park! Greif, Johan Gustafsson puts it in for the Vikings! With 19 11 remaining here in the contest! Johan Gustafsson from the assist of Frederick Greif! Golso, Golso, Golso! Goal for North Park! So, yep, there's just a very, very exciting game for the Vikings. And now uh, for Coach Bourne in his 16th season, the Vikings will continue on uh, in the NCAA postseason tournament. As I said, uh, this will be their fourth trip in the last five seasons and their sixth overall 
since the 2005 season. So we wish the men's soccer team all the best of luck uh, as they move on to the NCAA tournament this weekend. Moving on to some other the other sports on campus, as uh, the North Park football team now has one week remaining in their schedule. Vikings came up with a solid 34 to uh, 36 to 14 win they had over Carthage College on Saturday, and uh, I was able to co- catch up with head coach Mike Conway earlier today uh, to talk to him a little bit about um, that uh, win. So let's go ahead and show the, that to you right now. Joined by head football coach Mike Conway of the North Park Vikings. North Park coming off another solid victory, 36-14 victory over Carthage on Saturday, senior day for the Vikings. So it was the regular season home finale for North Park. Mike, now that you've had a chance to, you know, look at the tape from uh, on Saturday, and you know, what are your impressions now of the games you guys had at, at, against Carthage? Pretty happy man right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> After that win, uh, our kids uh, really came alive and played a complete game, uh, uh, offensively, defensively, and our special teams. Uh, we made some made some strides there too, which was good. And uh, I guess that's probably the it's probably the first game that we played a complete. Uh, Complete football game in all three phases of the uh, all three phases of the game. Mm-hmm. So um, it was a great crowd. Uh, it was our senior day. We, we honored 18 seniors yeah. uh, who have stuck with this program from uh, through some difficult times and, and it just displayed so much character. I really wanted this. Our guys really wanted this game for them, and mm-hmm. it was really nice to see them all play so well and play as a team. Mm-hmm. It was a great team victory and. Uh, Great, great day all the way around. Mm-hmm. A couple of records were set too, and I mean, you guys go 2 0 against Carthage first time since the 92 93 season. And then uh, your son, TD Conway, breaks the past attempt record now and has 409 in a single season, breaking Mike Haynes' old record set in 2004. Talking about what he was able to do, just being able to get guys open and get receivers open and all that. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's developing, like we say, you know, it's. Uh, you know he's able to do what he can do because he gets uh, he's got a great offensive line uh, because we uh, got great a great core receivers that, that play in great and we've got a great set of running backs that are doing a great job so you know any 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 award or any records that anybody gets on this team is a team thing and he'll say that to you as well um, so when a quarterback throws touchdown passes there's a lot of things that have to go in place to uh, to to make those things happen as far as uh, we throw a lot more passes too mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> these days. So, uh, but he's been he's developed and played a really good game and given us a little bit more of a dimension running the ball occasionally now and uh, he's really developed in that regard too. And and uh, so it's a it's a team effort. It's a team thing. And uh, you know our offensive line has done a good job of protecting him. And and uh, you know when you can run the ball, uh, we feel if we can run the ball for 100 plus yards in a game, we're gonna we're gonna have a chance to win that game pretty well. We play good defense, and sure enough, the last two of the last games we won against Milliken, we had over 200 yards rushing, and against uh, Carthage, I think we had 130 some or whatever. Uh, so if we can run the football, it takes a little bit of the pressure off of uh, off the passing attack and. We also had a, a couple stats that kind of get lost is that we had 87 offensive plays and only 57 on defense. Okay. So we're, we had 30 more offensive plays, which means we're controlling the clock, controlling the football, we're uh, doing things the way we hoped that we could do it. Yeah. And um, a lot of it is throwing the football. So, you know, we, uh, we're pretty proud of our kids and how well they've uh, performed. And our defense was kept off the field because our offense controlled the football game. Yeah. And, I talked to our kids these last few weeks about how much how how much there is a how how each side of the ball complements each other, you know, offensively and defensively. You know, we had I think they were two for twelve on third down conversions and I think we actually lead the uh defensively we lead the league in fourth down stops this year, entire CCW, which is kinda cool yeah. to you know, we're starting to play better. Uh, defensively we had four uh our last four games were Starting to play a lot better defensively. I think we're averaging about 18 points in these last four games, so uh, our offense is starting to play better. So it's a it's a good team thing, and uh, we get our we got our kicker back. Uh, we're excited about. Yeah. <laughs> we're so, so happy for him. Uh, he's had a tough time, and we're so excited that he you know he was able to be perfect out there, yeah. kick two for two on field goals, and was perfect on PATs. Um, you know, there's been a lot of there's a lot of good things in this game mm-hmm. that happened. We had some momentum changers. You know, we got uh, I think Greg Sager says that uh, 
The only thing Anthony Burton isn't doing is selling hot dogs at halftime. Anthony Burton was at the concession stand, I think yeah. is what it was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and he'd probably do it if we, yeah. if, he, if I asked him to do it, he'd go do it too. He's, yeah. been, he's been an amazing kid for us. Uh, been a huge, uh, huge asset. You know, I have to recognize him as a, yeah. uh, you know, we we gave up a score early and, you know, the ensuing kickoff, he brings back almost all the way and changed the entire c complexion of the game and mm -hmm. kind of shot some life into us. Uh, uh, you know, those are little things that I talk to our kids about as being momentum changers, and changing the changing the game by by making something happen when we need it the most, you know. Mm -hmm. So he's been doing that all year. And, you know, we had Devin, Devin Childers was, uh, you know, was questionable to play and mm -hmm. goes and catches three touchdown yeah. passes. And so there was a lot of things that, um, you know, I don't want to focus on the quarterback or one guy because it's such a such a team event mm -hmm. out there. Now you guys uh, finish up the season now uh, going down to Bloomington against Illinois Wesleyan now Saturday. What, what's the game plan going to be now going into that game? Well, like I'm going to give you the game plan. <laughs> no, it's, you know. <laughs> the plan is to try. To, the plan is to win. You know. Uh, you know. We haven't. I don't think we beat you. You know more than I do, but I don't think we've beaten them in a long time. Uh, you know. I, I'm sure that there's. Uh, um, you know. There's a. There's a sentiment that you know, we'd like to try to play great against them. You know. And they're struggling a little bit. They've had a couple losses in a row now, and uh, they've had a tough part of the schedule that we went through earlier. Yeah. I mean, Wheaton and North Central and those people. Uh, it's a tough deal. But I mean, I think we got a legit shot down there. You know, we didn't didn't play well down there last year at all. It was a tough one for us. Uh, we were really not in the ball game. Um, so we think that uh, we think that this would be a fun opportunity for us to send our seniors out to have a good game against them and be competitive. You know, it's a, Norm's a great coach, and they've had such a great tradition over the years. And uh, we're on the rise, hopefully, and we're gonna. We're going to give it everything we got like we have. So, And if our front can play as well as they did defensively last week, uh, we had six sacks and really dominated a, dominated the football team, on def dominated the offense on defense last year, last week. And uh, mm -hmm. we can continue that up. Uh, our four guys up front are playing extremely well, and uh, hopefully they can continue that because they got a pretty darn good defensive front as well that we got to contend with. So it's, a, it's, a, it's going, to be a fun, going to be a fun game and uh, going to be a – it's gonna be. We got a shot at him. We'll see what happens. Absolutely. All right. Well, thanks, Mike, so much for taking the time this week, and we wish you guys the best of luck out down in Bloomington. Thanks, Kevin. You have a good day. Thanks, Mike. First and ten now for the Vikings from the 23-yard line. TD Conway back to throw, looking over the middle. Jarvis has got a touchdown. Devin Childress. Looking no worse for wear on that touchdown catch. Fourth and four from the Vikings, 28. And Selma looking in the near side, is picked off! Picked off by Boswell! He's to the 50, he's to the 40, and Selma tackles him at the 32-yard line! Senior Ryan Boswell on senior day with the interception. I believe that pass was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Trevor Forker one to the far side. Second and goal from the six. Jones in motion. Back to throw is Conway. Touchdown, Vikings! And who else but Devin Childress? With his second touchdown catch of the first quarter, Anthony Burton at the tailback, and he will take the pitch, and he will try and get it into the far corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Anthony Burton! Burton managed to get past Kurt Dumbas and scamper into the far corner of the end zone. Make this work in a hurry. They do have three timeouts remaining. Jones in motion. Back to throw is T.D. Conway. He's looking and he's got his man! Childress! Childress to the five! Touchdown Vikings! The kick is up, and it's, it's good. good. 
Come on! Well, it took until the ninth game of the season, but uh, the Vikings finally get their first field goal of the 2014 campaign. Back is Bellamy behind Anselmo. Anselmo back to throw, chased out of the pocket, eludes Leeforts, and he won't get away, however, from Trevor Forker. Forker sacking Anselmo all the way back at the 28 yard line. Trevor Forker having a fantastic senior day. Field goal earlier in this game. The kick is up. So you have just an unbelievable, exciting game for the Vikings. Uh, as they now finish up the season on Saturday, they will be traveling to Illinois Westland to take on the Titans uh, Saturday at 1 p.m. So um, looking at some sports on campus, the North Park women's soccer team, although they finished the season um, uh, with a, a loss to Wheaton College back on November 1st, the all CCIW selections for women's soccer came out and uh, senior forward Emma Lundin was actually selected as a first team all CCIW selection, becoming the first North Park Viking to earn all CCIW first team selection uh, honors since the 1998 season. And we actually put together a tribute video to uh, Emma Lundin for that uh, selection. So let's go ahead and show that to you right now. Number 15, Emma Lundin. Nice job of getting that one. It speeds it up to Emma Lundin. Emma Lundin's now got nobody in front of her. All she's got to do is beat the keeper. She's got just a size of it, and she puts it in! Go, so, go, so, go, so! Go for North Park! Emma Lundin puts it in for the Vikings! With 22-20 remaining here in the first half, the Vikings are taking a 1 0 lead on a goal by Emma Lundin! Go, so, go, so, go, so! Go for North Park! Gets it right to the feet of Annika Nyquist. Nyquist does catch up to it. Tries to center it up. Up to uh, Lundin, but it puts it in! Go, so, go, so, go, so! Go for North Park! Emma Lundin puts it in for the Vikings with 32 3 remaining here in the first half. North Park has taken a 1 0 lead on the goal from Emma Lundin off the pass from Annika Nyquist. Go, so, go, so, go, so! Go for North Park! Lundin's got a wide open goal. She's going to put it in. Go, so, go, so, go, so. Go for North Park. Emma Lundin puts in her second goal of the game off the assist from Kelsey Deal. And the Vikings take a 2 0 lead here at the Home Grand Athletic Complex. Go, so, go, so, go, so. Go for North Park. Yep, just a just an unbelievable season that Emma Lundin had for the Vikings as she nearly became the all-time uh, leader in goal scored, just finishing one goal shy of that mark, unfortunately. But still, just a very uh, unbelievable senior season for Lundin. Um, moving on to uh, some other sports on campus, uh, the women's tennis team, uh, their all select all CCIW selections also came out last week, and freshman Lisa Daniels became the CCIW. Freshman of the year, the newcomer of the year, and was selected as a first team all conference player. Obviously, be becoming the first tennis player to do that since the program's inception. Um, so, uh, she finished, ended up finishing uh, seven with a seven and four overall record uh, in the regular season and then went on to finish third in the conference tournament. So, congratulations to Lisa Daniels for earning that award. So, we wish her, her all the best of luck in her sophomore season as the Vikings look to improve on that record from uh, this past uh, fall as they will be moving on into their offseason. Uh, moving right along to the North Park men's basketball team, Vikings uh, will be opening the season on November 18th against uh, St. Norbert's College but out in De Pair, uh, Wisconsin. We were actually able to uh, catch up with head coach Tom Slater uh, earlier in the week, uh, last week, to talk a little bit about the team. So let's go ahead and show you that interview right now that uh, Coach Slider and had and I had uh, earlier. We're now joined by head men's basketball coach uh, Tom Slider of the North Park Vikings. North Park coming off a 4-21 um, record from a season ago as well as a 1-13 record in the conference. And uh, Coach, uh, how are you doing today? And uh, I guess the, the bigger question is, you know, now that you guys got practice coming up here, you know, what are your expectations for the upcoming season? It's like Christmas Day, Kevin, around here. You, you know, guys get anxious to start the season, and coaches do as well. So 
you know, you can only plan so much and then it's time to lace them up, lace them up and get started. So we're, we're excited. Mm -hmm. What are your expectations now coming into this season and hopes that you guys can improve on last year's 4-21 and record? Well, uh, mostly uh, continue to improve on the process. And, um, you know, we, we feel like we've now, uh, in, going into year three, uh, brought some guys in that, that uh, will help be part of our culture and, and play the way that we want to play. And so, um, you know, there's only one player in the, in the, in the program right now that uh, existed when we, we came in here as a staff. So mm -hmm. uh, going into year three, it's kind of, there's been a lot of turnover. And mm -hmm. again, you hope that you're finding guys that fit your system more. So, um, you know, obviously we look to improve. Mm -hmm. on the record and a bit, but more importantly improve on the process and the understanding of what it takes especially in this league mm -hmm. talking about what uh, who you've got coming back to the team now, i think you, you and i talked about it a little bit earlier you guys got 12 guys returning to the team talking about the, what they're going to be able to bring back well we do have 12 guys and and um you know it's always good to try to get some continuity uh going and you know uh, it's probably been the first time in in the three years that we've had a group of guys uh, come back that now kind of know what's expected. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you first start with the seniors. Uh, now, with that said, there's only one senior that's been here four years. Mm -hmm. um, the other seniors that we have have transferred in. But mm -hmm. nevertheless, uh, Trent Kuchera, uh, Garrett Gatz, and Michael Wilson will all be looked upon mm -hmm. to provide great leadership. And they've done that so so far this uh, preseason in, in workouts and and. Um, their leadership, they're respected, they work hard. Um, you know, Trent is extremely reliable and is about as North Park as they come mm -hmm. uh, with his family, uh, parents going here, um, you know, his uncle went here. Uh, so so he bleeds blue. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then Garrett Getz is our energy guy and, and is a great mm -hmm. shooter. And Michael Wilson has done a great job over the summer of, of really uh, working on his fitness level and and improving his game, so we expect a lot out of those seniors. Mm -hmm. Talk about too about some of the the uh, new the, or not the newcomers, just some of the guys out of that twelve that are coming back, especially uh, Juwan Henry, who was named the freshman uh, freshman of the year last year for the CCIW. Well, I think right now when anybody mentions North Park, if they do, uh, Juwan Henry's name uh, mm -hmm. comes up, and and uh, you know, and rightly so, he had such a great uh, freshman campaign, and you know, Juwan is. Uh, made great strides maturity wise um, in a lot of areas mm -hmm. and so uh, you know the, the thing about Jawan now going into a sophomore year is it really is it is still in his career he's been on the floor so much logged so many minutes um, more than any other freshman normally does mm -hmm. uh, and being such an integral part of what our team does um, our opponents have uh, tried a number of ways to shut him down and he's mm -hmm. seen a lot of different uh, things that sometimes um, only veteran players see. So um, we're expecting, again, him to have an, another great year, and uh, not to jinx him, but, uh, you know, certainly he's a focal point on, and, and we have, we're going to rely on him a great, a great deal. So Talking about, too, about some of the outside the 12, that's about some of the newcomers you guys got coming in here for this year. Well, we're really excited about um, our freshman class, and, um, in particular, uh, Colin Lake is a um, heralded freshman out of Michigan uh, okay. who came in averaging 31.8 points a game as a senior in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he scored over 40 points five times his senior year. So oh, wow. okay. um, pretty pretty dynamic score. Mm -hmm. um, Demeanor David and Stature, a uh, huge heart. And, um, you know, we, we look forward to him uh, stepping on the court soon in his career. Mm -hmm. um, Jordan Robinson. Um, a local guy, if you call Hoffman Estates in the suburbs, a local guy, uh, and and it's a guy that we expect also to make an immediate impact in our program. And then um, Trevor Pye, who's also from Hoffman Estates, okay. he's our third guy from Hoffman Estates. Nice. Joe Joe Vico being a veteran coming back, <laughs> so we kind of have a little Hoffman Estates pipeline mm -hmm. going there. But nice. uh, Trevor uh, brings a lot of leadership qualities and work ethic and things like that. And there's going to be some other freshmen that make an impact as well. But those are three freshmen that probably will uh, certainly stand out early. Okay. 
Talk about too what uh, what what kind of offense defense you guys are going to run. Is it going to be more of an up tempo thing, or is it going to be more of a possession game? What what do you think is going to be the things that's going to draw you guys to success this year? Well, I'm certainly not going to give away our secrets, but uh, you know we'd like to continue to push the ball up and down the floor, and uh, we we always like to press some, and, and uh, you know we we'd like to get a lot of guys involved in the offense. We we think that we've addressed some needs where we have multiple guys that are capable of scoring. So mm -hmm. I guess time will tell on that. Um, and I've always been one that uh, kind of shies away from the star system of one guy scoring all the points, which hasn't necessarily been the case yeah. of how we played in the last couple of years. But, um, you know, hopefully with some of the development of our guys, with some of the needs that we think we've addressed in recruiting, mm -hmm. um, you'll see that. Um, you know, we'd like to... First and foremost, we'd like to improve our defense and rebounding, which is, I think, a key for any team to have success. Mm -hmm. you guys opened the season on November 15th against Illinois College, but looking past that, you know, talking about how you see the CCIW shaping up this year. Well, the CCIW is, is going to be as, as strong as ever. Um, one of the preseason polls, the D3 Sporting News, I believe, is the uh, newest poll that just came out, okay. I believe, had Illinois Wesleyan 3, Augustana wow. 6, and uh, Wheaton 12. So, wow. okay. <laughs> um, you know, there's three schools, and, and if it's a typical year, there's going to be another school in the CCIW rise mm -hmm. up to be in the top 25 before the year's out. So, yeah. um, don't expect any less from our league, um, more of the same, and uh, it's our job to try to uh, rise up in the midst of all that. Mm -hmm. Going back to the, the original part of the question, as the non-conference schedule, how much do you see the non-conference schedule preparing you guys for that rigorous CCIW schedule? Well, you always hope you schedule opponents that uh, will allow you to see certain things that other teams in your league do. Uh, and, and in the midst of doing that, though, you're still trying to achieve some balance at home in a way and mm -hmm. and uh, not have to return certain games. We're, we're I think extremely fortunate to be in a very unique position this year yeah. where uh, 16, uh, well, of our 11 non-conference games, nine of them are at home. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, and uh, of a 25-game schedule, 16 mm -hmm. of our 25 games are at home. That's cool. When you throw into the mix that we play the University of Chicago on the road, mm -hmm. uh, Wheaton, North Central, and Elmhurst are all basically in the city of Chicago. Yeah. 20 of our 25 mm -hmm. games are in the city of Chicago. Wow. So. Okay. Um, we really aren't going to be on the road much this yeah. year, and uh, hopefully that will bode well for us, and, and we'd like to think that we could get some home court advantage and build some momentum. All right, well, thanks so much, Tom, for taking the time today, and we wish you guys the best of luck in the upcoming season. Always a pleasure, Kevin. Thank you. Right, that's Tom Slater. Right, so, yep, yeah, the Vikings, they're just looking to improve on last year's 4-21 uh, and record and 1-13 mark in the conference, so hopefully with the newcomers that they have as well as the uh, freshman newcomers, uh, Juwan Henry, from last year, that the Vikings can improve on that record from last year. And um, looking at the other team, the North Park women's basketball team, Vikings, uh, they will be opening the season, as I said, at the top of the webcast on November 15th um, against uh, Olivet College this coming Saturday. And uh, I was also able to catch up with head coach Amanda Crockett uh, uh, late last week. And so let's go ahead and show you that uh, conversation that her and I had uh, last week. We're now joined by head women's basketball coach Amanda Crockett. Vikings looking to improve on last year's 12 and 13 record as well as a 5 and 9 record in the conference. And uh, Amanda, now I'm just knowing that you've had a couple of practices in your belt. You've seen the, what the 2014-15 team is going to kind of look like. Uh, you know, what are your expectations now for the upcoming year? Um, you know, we have high expectations. You know, our our goal is to finish in the top four of conference and go to the conference tournament. Um, I think that's a feasible goal for us this year. We have uh, set, uh, seven returners, and all seven of those uh, returners averaged at least 18 minutes a game last year. Um, so those are significant minutes, and um, I, I think that valuable experience will, will help us improve and get better as a team this year. Mm -hmm. You mentioned um, seven returners, uh, Rachel Torres being one of those all-conference player returning. What are your expectations of her now coming into the season? Um, I'd like to see improvement as far as leadership, and I think she's been doing a better job uh, this year, having a whole year under her belt, being a sophomore, uh, being a veteran as far as minutes played, and uh, she's been vocal in practice and, and has, has been a, a good role model you know, for those freshmen coming in. Um, she's a versatile player, and, and I expect her to kind of give us whatever we need in order to win the game, whether that's points, rebounding, assists. 
Um, we talked about improving her assist to turnover ratio, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, better decision making and um, you know, we have high expectations from her. Mm -hmm. You got Annie Shane coming back now for her senior season. Talk about what she's going to do and, and uh, all these uh, other returners that you, seven, you, you mentioned that are how they're going to contribute to this year's team. Yeah. Um, you know, Annie's been a nice leader for us. She's a senior. She's been here four years. Uh, she understands what it takes to win at this level. Um, you know, she's been shooting the ball really well in practice, and, and I, I, I really expect her to have a good year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she had an ACL injury a couple years okay. ago, and, um, you know, she's, she's come back fully from that. She's a confident player right now. Okay. What the, where do you see this team making its success on this year? Do you think it's going to be more on the offensive side of things, more defensive side? What do you think it's going to be, a mixture of both maybe? Ideally, it would be a mixture of both. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we did take strides on the offensive end last year. I was disappointed with our defense last year. Mm -hmm. um, but having such a young team, I think that's an area that we, you know, n naturally just struggled with. Mm -hmm. um, this year, having a more veteran team, I think they understand how to get consecutive stops and how important that is in a basketball game. Um, uh, you know, we need those stops in order to win. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the, the conference uh, shaking up this year? Obviously, it's going to be, a, once again, another strong year for the conference. Where do you see you guys in the mix? Uh, and just talk about how you see the conference shaking up this year. Um, you know, every night is, is a battle. Every, every night, it, it's a war in conference. And, you know, we did have a lot of close games last year, and we came up short, which was mm -hmm. disappointing. And, you know, our girls understand that. I think they're hungry this year uh, to make up for that in order to make the conference tournament. Um, it'll be an interesting year, you know. Um, we don't know until we, you know, we get out and face each other. But it, I, I do know it's going to be a battle and it's going to be a, a, a fun conference season. Mm -hmm. How much do you think the non-conference schedule is going to prepare you guys for that conference slate? Uh, I think it should should prepare us pretty well. You know, our first game is is at home against Olivet. They have a six foot five uh, Division one transfer oh. post player. Okay. We played them last year and and and, and lost a close game to them. So um, it, I, I'm glad to have them at home. And you know, it, it it'll, it'll be a, a tough opponent for us. You know, we have um, Wisconsin Lacrosse at home. You know, we go down to uh, San Antonio, Texas, and play at uh, Trinity. So, and we also have uh, St. Mary's from Minnesota at okay. home right before conference, and you know, uh, those are going to be some tough non-conference opponents for us. Okay. All right. Well, we'd like to uh, thank you for joining us today, Amanda, and we wish you guys the best of luck this year. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much. It's Amanda Crockett. Yep. Just it's it's just another exciting um, action now coming up now for North Park women's basketball. Uh, so as they will be the only team on campus this week, as I said, uh, football will be traveling out to uh, Illinois Wesleyan on Saturday. So um, this has been another edition of MPU Weekly. We hope that you have enjoyed today's webcast, and we hope that uh, you will be joining us later on this weekend as we will be bringing you North Park Women's Basketball on our MPU Live channel as the Vikings will be opening up the season to take on Olivet College at 2 p.m. on Saturday. I'm your host, Kevin Shipke, once again. Thank you so much for enjoying tonight's web webcast of MPU Weekly. And also, don't forget, too, I should mention, too, that the North Park football team, uh, their webcast will also be available online at the, uh, on, on the North Park Athletic website uh, by audio only, as we hope you join Greg Sager for that webcast. So uh, until then, go Vikings!